Welcome to my presentation on carbohydrates. Monosaccharides are basically the individual monomers that make up a polysaccharide, which is essentially a carbohydrate. All monosaccharides are reducing sugars and therefore will cause a colour change when added to Benedict's reagent, which is warmed in a test tube. The colour change that we will see is from a bluish colour to brick red, and that will indicate the presence of a monosaccharide. It's important to remember that all monosaccharides are reducing agents, and that's why we see the colour change. Examples of monosaccharides may include fructose, galactose, and glucose. Monosaccharides are also sweet-tasting soluble substances. On the other hand, disaccharides are basically two monosaccharides that are joined together by a glycosidic bond formed in a condensation reaction. The condensation reaction will often produce a single molecule of water for each glycosidic bond that's formed. Not all disaccharides are reducing sugars and therefore we must um, do a slightly different testing process to that of monosaccharides, which I'll go into on the next slide. When a disaccharide glycosidic bond is broken, its two constituent monomers are released. This process is known as hydrolysis and requires the addition of a water molecule for the reaction to occur. So the test of disaccharides is similar to the test for monosaccharides. First, what you have to do is you have to carry out the monosaccharide test because some disaccharides are reducing sugars and therefore will show up on, on the Benedict's test. However, if there is no color change on the Benedict's test, we must then hydrolyze the disaccharide. That means breaking up the disaccharide into its two constituent products um, or monomers. Um, that make it up because we know that all, mono, all disaccharides are made up of monosaccharides and all monosaccharides are reducing sugars, therefore will result in a colour change in the Benedict's test. So to do that we must use HCl, so hydrochloric acid, to hydrolyze the glycosidic bond. Th this is then followed by um, the addition of sodium hydrocarbonate which is used to neutralize the HCl. This is because when we rerun the Benedict's test, the Benedict's test can only take place in alkaline solutions, not acidic solutions. So when we rerun the Benedict's test, we would expect a colour change from blue to brick red. Examples of disaccharides may include sucrose, which is made up of glucose and fructose, maltose, which is made up of glucose and glucose, lactose, which is made up of galactose and glucose. Polysaccharides, on the other hand, are made of many repeating units of monosaccharides, which I said earlier. Um, examples of polysaccharides may include cellulose, starch, and glycogen. And we'll go into detail about each of these three and their properties in the next couple of slides. So starch and its properties. So starch is a polysaccharide found in plants um, and is made up of long chains of alpha-glucose monosaccharides. Starch is unbranched yet highly compact and therefore is very tightly coiled. Starch is also very large and insoluble and therefore doesn't affect the water temperature of the cell. This as a result ensures that cells don't take on too much water by osmosis and therefore cause the cells to burst when they have too much water. This is known as osmotic lysis so that's important that it prevents that. Starch is also very compact and therefore stores a lot of energy in a small amount of space. When starch is hydrolyzed by enzymes, it forms alpha-glucose very rapidly, which can easily be transported around the, uh, around the body because alpha-glucose is soluble and therefore can be used in respiration. Glycogen is very similar to starch and is often referred to as animal starch. Um, starch is, um, the glycogen is very insoluble and does not affect the water potential of the cell. Um, Glycogen also cannot diffuse out of the cell and is very compact, therefore it stores a lot of energy in a small space. Glycogen is also highly branched, allowing it to be broken down simultaneously by enzymes to produce alpha-glucose if needed in respiration. The fact that it's highly branched provides that very large surface area to, to allow, rapid, allow the rapid breakdown of the glycogen. Now cellu cellulose is slightly different to glycogen and starch. The main reason is because it's made up of beta glucose rather than alpha glucose. Cellulose is made up of straight chains of beta glucose that run parallel to each other um, and therefore allow strong hydrogen 
bonds to form between each of the chains. This is strengthened further by something known as microfibrils, um, which improves the strength of the hydrogen bond. As a result, uh, cellulose is a major component of cell walls due to the fact that it's very strong and will help to prevent cells from bursting as a result of osmotic pressure. And that comes to the end of my presentation. If you liked it, please subscribe.